Hi, this is Tim Mueller with Fit Small Business. Today I'll be evaluating Easy Farms accounting features for the Fit Small Business Buyer's Guide. So, uh, Easy Farm has been kind enough to supply me with the free trial version of the Easy Farm Premier Edition, which is what we'll be reviewing. So, first off, I'd like to say this is the most unique software I have ever seen, and I think people are either going to love it or they're going to hate it. Um, so as a bookkeeper, it's extremely confusing for me, um, but I'm not a farmer. And so I do think that farmers might find this uh, workflow very useful and get in line uh, with how they need to record transactions. So I'm gonna walk you through um, the Easy Farm software. There are lots of videos available that Easy Farm has put out to help people understand the flow of the program, because again, it is very unique. Okay, the first thing we need to understand is everything stems from the chart of accounts in this program, which is true for most accounting programs, um, but especially for this program, and I'll show you why. So let's go to our chart of accounts. And our uh, chart of accounts is broken into our account types, right? Asset, liability, equity, income, expense, and payroll. Um, but there's a lot more detail to these accounts. Um, so if you select, say, my bank, and let's edit. Okay, so the account group is checking, gives us an account number, an account name, but then the account type is checking. And it's extremely important that you uh, indicate the proper account type here of checking, because what it's going to do is it's going to handle each of your accounts differently based on the account type that you put. So let's go into, into some other examples. Uh, so let's go to like some expense accounts. And so here we can see like seed expense. So let's edit seed expense. Okay, and the account type here is seed. Good. And so what it's going to do is when you ex when you choose that account type, when you create transactions, it'll give you a different set of options than it will if you choose an account type of something other than seed. So you can see these account types, they're not your traditional accounting uh, account types like revenue and expense. So sure, we have revenue and expense, but then in addition to that, we have it labeled as seed. So my best recommendation is when you start to use the program, don't modify the chart of accounts uh, right up front. So these chart of accounts conform with, um, I don't remember the name of an organization that came up with a with a kind of a universal chart of accounts for farm accounting. And that's what this chart of accounts is derived from. So I wouldn't recommend changing it immediately. Learn how the program works first because the chart of accounts is so important. Learn how the program works first and then perhaps you'll wanna change some chart of accounts, some of the accounts in your chart of accounts. Okay, so um, here we have a few terminology things. So ledgers is what they basically call business history. So this is very much designed for a uh, self-employed farmer or an independent farmer. It's not designed for a corporation. Um, and the reason I can tell that is because it includes personal expenses along with your farm accounting, uh, which is perfectly fine when you're self-employed. If you're a corporation organized as a corporation, you should not be running personal expenses through your business. Um, so this is really best suited for self-employed. Okay, so our transactions are all gonna be recorded in this transaction tab. And most transactions are going to be recorded in your bank account. So this very much works on a cash basis. It does have in your chart of accounts, accounts payable and accounts receivable, but those really aren't useful. Um, you have to create an accounts payable for every separate, every separate vendor, and it doesn't allow you to enter due dates. And so you really can't track your unpaid bills. So the accounts repayable function is really not very useful. Your accounts receivable function, while accounts receivable shows up in this version of the program, I do not have access to the accounts receivable module, so I can't do invoices, I can't even record customer names here under all contacts. So again, accounts receivable is pretty much useless in this version of the program as well. So it's very much a cash-based program. So I'm gonna record income when I receive cash, I'm gonna record expenses when I pay cash. And so because of that, I can pretty much record all of my activity through my bank account. Okay, so we've selected the bank account we want to use, and now we're going to select, say, an ex a check 
and we're going to hit new. Okay, we can select a vendor to pay, say seed seller. Um, however much we paid him, we'll say $1,500. Okay, now we have $1,500. Now we need to explain where that $1,500 went. And so I'm going to hit add. And down here, we can add multiple lines here. Okay, so all of this information I would consider to be one line. So um, we are writing a check to seed seller for seed. So we're going to come down here. And while this is called an expense account in our chart of accounts, it's really not. It puts the money into a inventory account. So we're putting it into seed, $1,500. I think that should be the only thing we need. We can actually assign it to cost centers if we want. So a cost center could be an enterprise, could be a particular field. If you're paying expenses for equipment, it could be a piece of equipment. So however you want to enter your cost centers, you can. Here, if you're making a, ten, a payment that would have to be reported on a 1099, you can mark it there. So let's hit uh, save. And now we can see that we have accounted for the whole $1,500. Now, this is where things get very interesting with this program. So that transaction really wasn't all that unusual compared to other accounting software. Other than you've, ex other than you've selected a, uh, an expense account and it's actually going to go to an inventory account. If you want to keep track of your inventory, in addition to recording that piece of it, we need to go over here to the seed inventory. And this is why it's important that when we set up our chart of accounts, that we have the seed inventory. So because we selected seed as part of the transaction, it popped up this tab, seed inventory. And here is where we can add the detail. So notice it's got the $1,500 from the transaction. Now we can say that the unit cost was, say, $10 per unit. And so now it's going to adjust the quantity to 150, say, bushels or whatever units you're using to track this particular thing. Um, here we need to again select seeds. And save. Okay, yeah, I've had this program bomb out on me several times. Um, let's see, unhandled. Okay. Um, maybe the problem is here you select the balance sheet account. Okay, so we're going to put the seed in bin one. There we go. That's what it is. So we've purchased the seed. Now we're selecting the seed into bin one. So let me change what I was saying. So before, when you're in the checking tab, you're selecting that expense account. It is going to an expense account. And then if you want to keep track of your inventory, you come over here to seed inventory. Tell it where you're putting it. You're putting it in bin, in bin one. Tell it the unit cost of, say, $10. Now it's going to show 150 say bushels uh, being stored in bin one, hit save. And there we go. That's the seed inventory. So that's the general idea of how you go about recording transactions um, in this software. So again, we'll go back over here to checking. We can also enter another checking transaction. Um, you can enter it as a deposit. OK, you can enter it as a deposit. OK, so again, I'm not going this isn't a full tutorial on the software, just kind of an overview of how the accounting works. And that's how it works. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let's cancel out of this. OK, and let's select this. Let's edit this seed seller thing we just did. OK, actually, I don't even think we have to edit it. I think we just can click it here and we can come up here and we can print a check. Over here, perhaps, here's the print button. So we select it over here, I think. Oh, yeah, this is the button, I think, for reconciling it. Here we can select to print it. OK, there we go. And well, let's hit preview to see what it looks like. We don't have Seed Seller really set up with an address or anything, so it's going to look pretty basic here. It popped up on my other screen. And so that's what the check is going to look like. OK, and there are there's a place in the preferences to 
adjust margins and stuff so that it fix your, fits your check stock. Okay, um, so let me think about other things we may need to talk about. So um, it is a double entry accounting system. You can customize your chart of accounts. You can keep a list of your vendors. That's over here in contacts. Okay, so over here on the left hand side, here we go. So we can click our contacts here and that will bring up all our contacts. So this is employees and customers. Okay, um, so we can keep a list of, I'm sorry, it's, it's employees and vendors. So I set up this customer um, but actually, let's see, can I edit him? It's still a, it's a vendor. I just happen to call him a customer. So we can only track vendors here. We need the accounts receivable software in order to track, uh, customers. Okay. Um, so we cannot generate invoices here. We can't track unpaid bills as we've already talked about. One thing I would like to show you is the uh, the payroll setup. Um, so if we go to preferences and payroll, and so this is a problem, um, right? So it's it's asking you how much tax do you want to withhold, right? So Social Security six point two, Medicare is one point four five. That's all perfect, but this is withholding seven percent federal tax. That's not right. That's not how federal withholding works, right? You have to go by the IRS bracket uh, at withholding brackets that they release every year, and it's based on how often are you paid, what is your income level, are you single or married, does your spouse work or not. So you can't just withhold based on a flat percentage like this program does. So this is not compliant. I would not recommend anybody using this payroll software. Okay, um, it would be more difficult for them to download, uh, you know, your your updated payroll uh, withholding schedules on a periodic basis. But if you want to offer payroll, that's what you have to do. And there are other farm programs out there that does that. So do not use this for your payroll needs. Okay, so I think that gives you an overview of how Easy Farm works and how their accounting features work. Again, it's incredibly unique. You can't really do accounts payable. You can't really do invoicing, but you can track your cash inflows and outflows, and you can keep track of incredible detail within your inventory, within your cattle, within whatever livestock, within your seeds, within your crops that you produce. So farmers might really like this. I don't see a lot of bookkeepers liking this program because it is so unique and will have such a, a such a a learning curve. Um, but this might very well align with how farmers think, and it certainly provides an, an immense amount of detail um, for them to track expenses and inventory. So I hope this was useful. My name is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business.